Hello everyone from Curry Senior Vitality. My name is Josie from Community Tech Network and today we have a two-part lesson on troubleshooting common iPad issues. So first things first, I'll go over some preemptive measures you can take to try to keep your iPad running smoothly and hopefully avoid some of the most frequent issues that can come up. Some steps are related to the physical safety of your iPad. For example, I recommend keeping it in its case um, and closing the cover when you're not using it. This helps reduce the chance of it getting broken if it falls or if you drop it. Another thing is, of course, to keep it clean and dry, since water or liquid damage is one of the most common uh, problems that can happen with computers. So keep it away from your drinks and store it in a safe place when you're not using it to avoid potential accidents. And finally, be gentle with the charger cord. Try not to bend it, twist it, or step on it. And when you're plugging it in and unplugging it, just be gentle with that port. You don't wanna jam the cord in there. Just place it in there carefully and gently. Next, I wanna talk about backing up your iPad. So first off, what are backups? When you back up your iPad, you're saving a copy of all of the information on your iPad in the iCloud. And that is a form of cloud storage, which just means that that information or those files are stored not only physically on this iPad, but also on an internet server somewhere else in the world. So why is this important? <laughs> if something happens, like your iPad is stolen or lost or gets broken, you can recover your information or transfer it to a new device just by logging in with your unique Apple ID. So it's recommended to turn on automatic iCloud backup. And let's just take a look at how to do this and how to check that your backups are turned on. So first we'll open settings and the setting icon looks like this, it's a gear. Next, you'll want to tap your name here and look for iCloud. And here you can see how much space is still available on your iCloud storage. You automatically have five gigabytes for free with your Apple ID. And under here, I'll tap on iCloud Backup. So this is where you can double check and make sure it is turned on. If this toggle button is green, it's on. And when automatic backup is turned on, it means that the iPad will be backed up whenever it is connected to power, so charging, locked, and on Wi-Fi. So for most people, that's pretty frequently, usually anytime you're charging it um, overnight, it will probably back up. And you can double check here when was the last time it was successfully backed up. So in this case, 8.20 this morning. You can also always come in and manually tap backup now. For example, let's say you just took a, a lot of photos and you wanna make sure that they're backed up. You could just wait until the next time it automatically backs up. But if you wanna be extra sure, you could tap backup now. Now, another really important thing uh, that you can do to help keep your iPad running smoothly is to make sure that the operating system stays up to date. Um, the operating system on the iPad is iOS, and just like any other computer, it has periodic software updates, which are usually designed to fix security issues and glitches, um, but also some bigger updates can also change the look of the iPad and may add new features. So let's just take a look at how to make sure your iPad is up to date. So again, if you were starting from the home screen, you would find settings again. And on the left side, scroll down to general, tap software update. And um, here you can see whether any updates are available. So my iPad is currently up to date and it's always good to make sure you have automatic updates turned on. So if you want, you can tap that and just make sure both of these categories are turned on and the toggle buttons are green. 
And when automatic update is turned on, it means that um, you'll receive a notification before updates are installed, but then whenever your iPad is charging and connected to Wi-Fi, it should go through and do that update automatically for you. However, you can also come in here and if there was an update available, it would be shown here and you could manually tap download and install. When you install an update, um, depending on the size of the update, your iPad will restart and it could take several minutes. If it's just a, a minor update, it'll be pretty quick, but the larger updates could take up to 30 or 40 minutes. So it's best to do that when you, you don't need the iPad right now. And a lot of people like to do the updates overnight when you have it charging. So besides software updates for the operating system, individual apps also have up updates available periodically. And uh, this should be automatic, but you can always double check for updates manually by going to the App Store, which is this blue icon with an A. And once it's open, you would tap on your user image, which is this little person. And scroll down and see if any updates are available. So in my case, I recently had several updates go through on different apps, so I don't have any updates available. But that's something you can double check. Now, another topic I want to go over is how to make sure that your iPad is synced with your other devices. Since in this program, you're using a Fitbit and a digital scale. I'm going to show you how you can double check that those are correctly connected to the iPad. So first, let's look at the Fitbit. And the Fitbit app looks like this. It's sort of a turquoise color with all these little dots. And of course, depending on how often you're using the Fitbit, you might see different information here. Um, but you can always double check that the Fitbit is connected by tapping in the top left on this little person icon. Here you'll be able to see your profile and it should show your Fitbit device connected. And when you tap on that, you'll see some information like the last time it was synced. Um, and it really should sync every time that you open the Fitbit app. Um, and it also is telling me my battery is low. This is where you can double check and just make sure, okay, everything is connected and the information on this today page should be up to date. Of course, you won't have much information if you haven't actually been wearing the Fitbit. And next thing, let's look at how to double check that your scale is connected. So I'll go to the home screen. And the app that uses the scale is called HealthMate. So it's this green and blue heart. Let me just rearrange this. When you have this app open, down at the bottom you have a tab of devices. And this is where you can just make sure that your, your scale should show up here. And you could also tap here for more information. If you scroll down in the about section, it does show the time of last sync, it says today. So it's just a way to confirm that everything is syncing. Now, some other more general things you can do to try to prevent issues from coming up with your iPad is for one thing, if you're uh, using the iPad frequently and on a regular basis, it's pretty common to just let it go to sleep or, or just press the power button to put it to sleep. But if you are going to be gone for a few days or away from your iPad, it doesn't hurt to power off your iPad fully from time to time. And just a reminder of how to do that is you would press and hold the power button for a couple of seconds. And then you would slide your finger left to right to power it off.
Another good practice and a good habit to form with your iPad is just to close apps when you're done using them. So let me remind you of how to uh, check which apps are open and how to close them. So the home button, if you double tap it, one, two, it will show you which apps are open. Right now I just have four apps open, but if you haven't been in the habit of regularly closing apps, you might find a lot of apps open. And that just makes your iPad work harder because it has all of these apps running in the background. So to close apps when you're done with them, you would swipe up and you can just do it one by one. And to avoid having to go through and close 50 apps at once, just try to make it a daily habit of closing an app when you're done using it. Another housekeeping thing that I like to do is clear notifications. So a reminder that to check notifications, you can swipe down from the top of the screen, which will open your notification center. In this case, I don't have a lot, but again, if you haven't been clearing them out regularly, you might have a long list. So in this case, with these two, I can slide my finger to the left and tap clear. Another thing that doesn't hurt to do is if you have a lot of apps on your iPad that you really aren't using, you might as well delete them because they're just taking up space. So to delete apps, you can touch and hold on the background of your home screen and then the apps will start to wiggle. And then any apps that you aren't using, for example, let's say I really don't use Messenger. I could tap on the delete sign and then I'm given the option to either remove it from the home screen or delete the app, which will completely uninstall it. So just to recap, the main preventative measures you can take with your iPad are physically protecting it from damage by keeping it in its case and away from liquids, being careful with your charging cables, keeping the iPad up to date, which is in settings, general, software update. Make sure you have automatic updates turned on. Keeping your iPad backed up which is in settings, tap on your name, tap iCloud, iCloud backup, and make sure automatic backup is turned on. Besides that, it's remembering to close your apps regularly when you're done with them. And delete any apps that you're not using. I hope this video was helpful. In part two of this lesson, we'll go into troubleshooting common iPad issues. Thanks for watching.